The morning star drive on 17.8. You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride, and it's time to fly. So let's realign. Just listen and fill your mind. Hey guys, how is it going? And welcome to the morning star drive on 117.8. It is Monday, July 1st, and so happy for you joining us. We are ready to start another week together with the Lord. So subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on SoundCloud, and make sure to support us on Patreon. So today we have an exciting podcast for you. We have Pravi in the media, the Sunday Westage uh, Word Study, and of course, commentaries, updates, and news on what is happening around the world in this history today. All right, everyone, how are you doing? And it is a wonderful week and the start of a new month. It is July 1st. Uh, don't forget, we have Q&A Thursday every single week, so get those questions ready. Send them to me whenever you can. And if you haven't yet, leave a like and comment to build our community. Just super happy for everyone joining us every weekday on the Morning Star Drive. So let's get up and support each other each and every day. Now, Sunday message title is The Eternal World is Determined on Earth. God and the Holy Spirit help you every single day. All right, so there it is, guys. That is the Sunday message title. I hope you guys really, really enjoyed that. I hope you guys had an amazing weekend also. Uh, what did I do on the weekend? On the weekend, I was able to um, meet up with a friend uh, from the former faith church. I had a really good talk with him for like three hours uh, over some really good coffee too. And um, yeah, anything new happened for you guys? Like, I'm pretty excited it's July 1st. Now, you guys might think to yourself, it's like, oh, wow, it's a brand new month. We've officially passed the halfway mark of the year. We have exactly six months remaining. However, today is even more special than that. July 1st, it is Canada Day. Yes, it is Canada Day. I am super happy, excited, stoked, whatever you want to call it, because Canada has now, you know, I don't know how old Canada is now. Like, I, can, I couldn't tell you that, but I'm just happy that it is July 1st. It is Canada Day. I'm not sure how we should celebrate Canada Day. Should we sing the national anthem? Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all thy son's command. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true nor strong and free. Hey, where's that line I want? From far and wide, O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Oh, here, this is the best part. God keep our land glorious and free. O oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. O oh, Canada, we stand on guard for the <sighs> everyone's cheering around the world because it's Canada Day. We can't believe it's the most special country to ever have been created by God. <sighs> Crowds are going wild, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for putting up with me. Yes, it is Canada Day. I'm not sure how many times I am going to talk about this, but it is, right? It's Canada Day, July 1st. It is also marking the halfway mark of the entire year of 2024. We have six months left. We have seven days before the end of the 70-day prayer condition, which also means, but I do think we're going to continue uh, the prayer condition again since the trial is most likely going to be delayed, most likely. And this is what I, I think even the lawyers were talking about this. It will probably be delayed. So uh, I hope that all of us can uh, work on this half of um, working on, you know, as we've worked on this first six months of the year, let's push even more. The 70 days are done. Let's go for another 70 days, okay? So I have something very, very cool for to kind of announce to you guys. Right? Uh, so, uh, what do you guys think about the rebel pastor in different languages using subtitles? So, the, the AI you know, machines and tools that they have right now allows us to make, um, to, to put subtitles in different languages. And there's like so many possibilities. It's in almost every single language we can get. Japanese, Chinese, Korean. There's tons of subtitle programs out there that could do it relatively easily. It takes like just a couple of minutes. And this is something we are thinking about doing to make a completely new channel just for the subtitle, whether it's Japanese, Chinese, Korean. I don't know what else is out there. Um, Tagalog or oh, what, other, what other language could we use it in? Uh, Cantonese or... Um, Mongolian, I don't know, French, right? There's so many different ways that we can make um, 
these subtitles. So this is something that we are doing about. And I'm thinking for sure, I think we're going to do Chinese for sure. I think we'll do Chinese for sure because I, I know that Chinese is a very, very large community in Providence and such. And I, I know Jap Japanese is also a very big uh, community and also Korean. So I think we'll try to do at least those three. But is, are there any other languages you think that we should get into? I would love to hear like, oh, you know, if we could get into this language, that would be great. It would help our ministry or something else along that line. But yes, um, AI is doing an amazing job. We've tested it out on Chinese, although it's only simplified Chinese. I, I don't think it does tr traditional Chinese, which I know Taiwan and probably Hong Kong uses traditional, but I know China and um, like Malaysia and may maybe Singapore are using simplified Chinese. I'm not sure, but please let me know. I would love to uh, hear it in uh, the... Um, what do you call it, in the comments below, or maybe I'll use it as a poll. Because I know the poll that we're doing right now, I'm talking a kind of a fun one, uh, that if you won $10 million, what would you do with it, right? And we've already got like, how many people have already signed up for this? Or how many people have already voted? Over 60 people, 64 people have voted already. And 45% say spend some, save some, and continue to work in your own job kind of thing, right? So uh, I think that's kind of cool. And uh, yeah, I will go, yeah, you know, let me get into that poll because the poll is kind of cool, right? And the poll is if you won $10 million, so, you know, $10 million equivalent to whatever your country is, what would you do with it? And uh, this, the reason why I asked this, because it has to do with the conversation I had with a friend. And it's about, uh, we were talking about true wealth, uh, true wealth, like what is uh, financial freedom? Like that, like what does it actually mean to you? And I found it quite interesting because I was listening to a YouTube short of 50 Cent. Now, 50 Cent is like a gangster rapper turned into like a business mogul. He makes, you know, he's worth millions upon millions of dollars, okay? And what does it mean to have true financial freedom? And the one thing, interesting thing, um, this YouTube short I heard from 50 Cent, he said that some people living in a one-bedroom apartment have already figured out how to be happy more than some rich people. And then he said, the key is, is who you choose to marry. Who you're with becomes the biggest reason why some people can be happy in a one bedroom and some people can be unhappy in a 10 bedroom, right? And I think this makes sense to us too, because yes, who you marry makes a huge difference. But I, also when it comes to who you marry, like in this week's Sunday message, it talked about um, choosing the right religion, which is also like you're marrying a religion who you choose to be connected to um, will determine your destiny. And if you pick the wrong religion, there is no chance for salvation. There's no chance for you to be saved or even be forgiven of your sins. And this is a huge decision that people make. So when I was thinking about this, like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And the thing that I, I was bringing up to you guys is what does it really truly mean to be financially free? Right? What does it mean to be financially free? Of course, we would have to say that more than the money, obviously, it would have to be, are you saved? Are you raptured? Like that would be number one for us. Do you believe in God? Do you believe in this history, right? In order for us to be truly happy in life. And this is, uh, I know that people would definitely have to figure this out before they really try to figure out what does it mean to be, um, what does it mean, uh, what is it, you know, what is it being financially free before that, you need to figure out, are you truly happy in life? Have you solved the issue of, found, uh, of salvation first? First, And that's the number one thing, okay? Because uh, one of the things that, uh, you know, I don't know why I'm quoting 50 Cent, but he's making sense because now he is super wealthy, worth hundreds of millions of dollars. And he said the same thing. He says, you know, um, you have to figure out how to be happy regardless of wealth and riches. Like, if you want to be really happy in life. And of course, that's number one first, right? Or else you're going to, you know, one of the biggest traps that people get into is you, you're stuck thinking that your wealth, um, your wealth is what makes you happy. And you get st stuck in this endless cycle of trying to make more and more, even though you have more than enough to live off of, right? So, you know, one thing about this day and age that we live in, especially with social media, what's one of the biggest uh, problems that people have is comparison, right? We compare each other all the time. We really do. And even though we could be happy, even though we don't have to be upset or sad or, or anything like this, we become very, uh, we compare ourselves to others and this causes us to be, uh, to feel that we're really, we don't really have enough. And I saw this uh, old grandpa 
who said he he realized he was rich. And everyone's thinking that this grandpa was like, oh my gosh, I'm actually a millionaire. But what this grandpa said was, he says, I realized I was rich. And, he, and the reason he said that, he says, number one, I have running water. Number two, I have uh, access to hot water anytime, right? Then he says, I can, I can also go to the store, buy any food that I want to. And he says, I am rich. So back then in his days, he wasn't capable of getting those things just to have that comfortable life. But he realized that he's far, he's really rich. He's got all the basics and necessities. He's got everything that he needs. And if you think about all of us here too, we all have these things. Yet, we are still trying to get more. And my, the bigger question is, could you actually stop trying to get more and be satisfied with what you have? And I think that's an interesting question. Even I, I was talking to a friend, uh, this friend from the former faith on uh, Saturday. And that question came up is like, how much is enough? And they said, well, just alone, it would be like 10K a month. Just alone, Right. And, you know, they, they said that, and when I, when, I, when I told this person the quote about what 50 Cent said is you have to be able to be happy in a one-bedroom apartment first. And this person said they couldn't do it, right? And I think, I think all of us too is if I asked you guys what would be enough for you guys, I think it would be different when you actually get into that situation. So imagine you say to yourself, oh, I just need a million in the bank and uh, it's enough, but once you get the million in the bank, how many of you could stop? And I think none of us could really answer that question until we really got into that situation. Because it's easy for us to say right now, yeah, as long as I have five million, I'm fine. And that's enough. We can easily say that. But when you actually have five million in your account and you can go for more, could you really stop? Right? Could you really, really stop? And I thought to myself is, man, if I had 10 million, I got to think to myself is, what is the thing I really, really want to do? And I would say it would be running and supporting Providence. Like that's something that I would really, really want to do. And right now with a very clear mind and not having $10 million, I would be like, I would take $2 million and I'd use the $2 million just to, um, what do you call it? i use the $2 million to um, uh, just spend. Spend meaning get a car, um, get a house or a place to live, uh, give some money to my parents and my family, whatever it is. And then I would start to, uh, then after that, I would start to go out and um, what do you call it? I would go to, um, then I, I would invest the 8 million, right? And when I think about like, why would I, what would, why would I invest so much of my money, right? And I would say that if I were to just get, uh, for instance, safe investments and about 10% return per year, I would be making about $800,000 a year, which would turn to about almost 70,000 USD per month. And is that enough? And to myself is, yeah, with that, like I've been running on what? You know what I mean? Like if I look at my life in Providence for the last 25 years, what have I really been running on and I've been okay and I haven't been like sad thinking like I'm pathetic? I haven't run anything close to that. You know what I mean? And I'd be like, yeah, and just just, just uh, live off of the interest for the rest of my life. And I would still have more than, and I would still have more saved up in my account at the end of it because I wouldn't be spending that much kind of thing, right? And I thought to myself, it's like, that's what, uh, that's what the reasonable person inside me would do is spend the two, Invest the eight, make 10%, which is pretty small for these investments, uh, safe investments, and just live off of 800,000 US uh, a year, which is about 80,000 USD a month, which is more than enough, right? And, you know, as I was, you know, like I said, I was thinking about this while talking to, uh, talking to a friend of mine. And weird thing is, you know how our phones pick up everything we talk about and such? They use AI to pick up what we talk about, and then they'll give us more things. Uh, then they'll give us, they'll put things in our feed 
uh, that will be towards what we talk about, right? So if you start talking about Batman, all of a sudden, on your phone, on your Instagram, on your, your YouTube, you're going to see a bunch of stuff on, on Batman, right? But here I am talking about like wealth and stuff like that. And interesting, inst- interestingly, all of a sudden on my YouTube channels, I had this one um, YouTube channel called The Jet Business, and this is about a guy who's been in the industry for like 40 years and all he does is sells he sells private jets to the uber wealthy like billionaires and the one thing that and this is interesting cuz i'm listening i was like i was listening just like why was this coming up and here he is selling these um these private jets that that are anywhere from 5 million to 80 million dollars like that's how that's how big the the price difference is for these private jets. And I saw him reacting to someone talking about private jets. And this guy this guy that he was watching says private jets is not about luxury. It is about time. And basically he was saying that People who have private jets are the ones where their time is so valuable. The amount of money they make in time that if they didn't have a a private jet, they would be losing time taking first class, following someone else's, you know, going uh, to the airport two, three hours beforehand. And then on top of it, you know, they have to follow this flight schedule of these like commercialized uh, planes and stuff like that. You would save more money buying a jet for like $30 million than flying commercial. Like that's how important their time was. And right when I heard that, what's the first thing that came to my mind? The first – like when I heard this, the first thing that came to my mind is like, wow, people who fly private are the ones where their time is that valuable. And the first thought – who is the person in the world that has the most valuable time? And it's Sun Sunim. Even looking at his age right now too, he doesn't have much time left, which means his time is even more valuable. Imagine Sun Sunim's time going to the airport two, three hours, and it would even be like, even if he's there two hours early, you're going to have to drive to the airport, get prepared and ready. Like, it's crazy how much time you need to spend on it, waiting in line. And then, you know, in the future, you're especially in Korea and such, you're going to have news reporters coming to see him. And I thought to myself is like, if there is anyone in this world who needs a private jet, it's Sun Sunim. And that became my prayer. I was like, God, Sunstein, if there is anyone who needs a private jet, it is Sunstein. I really thought about it. I was like, Sunstein needs this 100%. 100%. And I, I started to really talk to God about it. And I was like, God, if there's anyone who needs this, where time is of the essence, it is him. There is no one else but him. And... Then I prayed, and this was probably more of a greedy prayer. I was like, if there was anyone who could do this or that you'd want to work through, let it be me to buy the private jet for something too. So I was just like, please, God, like, could this be it? And I really think that we need to be thinking at this level also. Right? Especially at the tail end of Sunstein's life, how important his time actually is. Like, do you really want him to be bothered by, like, reporters and people taking pictures of him at the airport? Or would it be so much better where he only has to come 45 minutes before the the private flight? He gets – his car takes him directly to the airplane, gets on. It's him and maybe two others, three others, and that's it. That's all there is. And there he is. He gets on. He flies over there. And then when he's ready to leave, boom, he's ready to go right away whenever he needs to. You know what I mean? And I thought to myself is, man, if there's anyone who needs this more, it's him. No one bothering him, making sure no one slows his flight down. And I would say that would be even even better. We have so many stewardesses in Providence, like or ex-stewardesses that, you know, that are retired and such. We could just hire them to be the stewardesses and everyone around him is going to be comfortable. 
Like, I'm not sure about pilots. I'm not sure if we do have, like, a private pilot that, that can fly for Sunsteam right now, too. But definitely, I know we have stewardesses. And if we had those private, you know, people who um, will make him comfortable and such, why wouldn't that be such a great thing? Like, I think that would be awesome. I think the second best thing that we could do, the second best thing we could do, because when you when I was listening to this uh, the Jet Business Channel, uh, this guy was also talking about you can buy like pieces of a plane, <laughs> like not like just buying the wing or whatever, but uh, let's just say that the plane has um, uh, capabilities of four hundred hours a year. You can just buy a quarter of it and say I'm going to buy a hundred hours, and that's it, right? And if you buy 100 hours, you're not paying for the full flight, it's the full plane itself, but you get to use 100 hours a year anytime you want kind of thing, right? And I think that is quite uh, quite good too, which 100 hours is actually not that much because if Sunsteam travels, let's pretend he travels from like, say, Korea down to Malaysia, that's six hours. All the way back to Korea is another six, that's 12 hours right there, which means a tenth of your, more than a tenth of your time, 12% of your time is taken up by one return flight from Malaysia to Korea. Do you know what I mean? And then if he flies over to the US or something like that, he would have to, you know, that's going to be like 10 hours. Like one flight to the States would cost him 20% of his flight mileage, right? So that's why like everything I was thinking about, like, man, that would be so awesome if he, if we can get him something like this. I think, I think he needs it. And by gosh darn it, God, I will sacrifice myself. And you can be the one that uses me so that I can buy a plate for Sunsteam. I was like, yeah, this, this would be great kind of thing, right? So I was looking at that and I was like, yeah, this is something that I do think is, of course, I'm joking about, I'm kind of half joking that I want it to be me. But I, I do think it's something that uh, is very, very important also. It kind of reminds me of this, this quote that I, I read too. It says, uh, slow success builds character. Quick success builds ego. And I really, really like this because it shows how much we need to grow and mature before we reach true success, not becoming arrogant or having an ego, right? I would say that's something that really happened to me in my younger days. In my 20s, I am, you know, when I was like 27, 28 years old, this is when, you know, we were this big sensation happened in, in London, England. We were able to evangelize like 20 people in a year and a half. And all these are great. We were like, we were passing people every single month at a certain point kind of thing, right? And this became something where I somewhat became like kind of Providence famous, like Provi famous, you know what I mean? And it's something that can get to your head at such a young age, and I, I do believe that is something that we need to get into is slow success builds character, quick success builds ego. Um, and we need to be those that don't build the ego, but we really, really need to um, build character, right? And I think this is one of the reasons why God doesn't want us to become filthy rich so young. God doesn't want us to have that type of, um, uh, that type of, mentality or mindset where we're going to sit there and say, oh, this is what it is. Oh, this is what's happening here. You know, like, or we reach that time where our ego builds too much, where we become arrogant, self-centered, right? So I think it's something that we do need to think about. And I, I, I do think it's something that we can really uh, open our hearts to even more, right? Um, oh, very, very, like, you know, since, since we're on the topic of money and such, I was listening to uh, this uh, statistics person talking about studies on uh, debt and happiness and how much debt you have, it actually affects your happiness. Like how so? So here it is. So th listen to this, guys. This is pretty crazy. This is really, really crazy, okay? So if you have student loan debt, your happiness will lower, right? So just having student loan debt, your happiness will lower. If you have car debt, having a car debt, it says your happiness will tank. And if you have credit card debt, your happiness, uh, the effect on your happiness is catastrophic. Think about that. Student loan debt lowers your happiness. Car debt tanks your happiness. And credit card debt is catastrophic to your happiness. That is the effect of of debt, owing money on your happiness. 
right? It didn't talk. I, I, it did, said nothing about your your house rent, your house payments, right? It was basically about student loan, car debt, and and credit card. Those three debts uh, will lower or significantly lower your happiness. And you know, debt is a total psychological downer. To be in debt to someone, uh, it, like it says in, in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 7, it says the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is slave to the lender, which means once you're in debt, you become slave to the lender. And imagine in, in any case, when you become a slave, do you feel good or bad about it? I would say the same thing for me too is if I were to be in debt to someone, I would want to pay it off right away. That's why even for me, I, I think I'm going to get rid of my credit card now, now, now that I saw this. And some of you might think to yourself, it's like, oh my gosh, but what if you get points and this, this, and this? And if you guys look at the st statistics, the psychological st statistics on credit cards and point systems, uh, it's really crazy why credit card companies started these point systems. It's really crazy. And literally, it makes people buy more, more than you actually would normally spend. It really does, right? So for me, what I do is I use my credit card minimally and I pay it off the moment it comes up on my app and I see there's debt, I pay it off right away. Right away. I, I, don't, I, don't, even, I don't even hesitate. I will pay it off right away so it's always at zero. That's for me. Right? So, you know, the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is slave to the lender. And you kind of get to see that, wow, if it's really truly like this, this is why it's such a psychological downer on human beings to be in debt to someone else. Think about it, guys. When you're in debt, how do you feel towards that person? When you're in debt, how do you feel like, oh my gosh, I owe this person and you feel really bad around them and you feel this or that, like, oh, I still owe them this. Or uh, let's just pretend, like, even for myself, even for myself, if, like, uh, if I'm renting a car or imagine you borrow a car from a friend, what, what not, and even if you do, like, a small, like, little ding on the car, you don't feel good until you get it fixed, right? Like, I'll, I'll tell you right now, even for me, like, right away, boom, I'm like, okay, if there's a ding, I found a ding, I'm going to get it fixed right away. Why? Because you don't want to be in debt to people. And I think that's something that we really have to learn from on your happiness. And this is actual studies. Student loan debt lowers your happiness. Car debt tanks your happiness. And credit card debt is catastrophic to your happiness. And these are the literal words used by this uh, researcher uh, that was uh, talking about these statistics on debt and happiness. So I do think this is something we really, really uh, have to think about too. Okay, so that is uh, the end of the first segment of uh, the Monday podcast. Hope you guys have been enjoying this. Uh, let's move up. Before we get into the first music break of the day, not before. What do we have next? Oh, we have the Sunday Message Word Study. Really, really, I'm going to enjoy this one. But before we get into that, let's get into the first music break of the day. Sheesh, 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 sheesh. 2023. We've all come a long way. Many different stories, but we're all on the same journey. Many, many ups and downs, but we're all still around. Many, many, many lessons, but each one came with a blessing. Let's not forget for where we come from when we make this confession sheesh, 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 sheesh. Some people just want to watch the world burn As for you and I Let's set ourselves on fire, shine a light so bright that will make the people say Burning sheesh, life, burning life, uh-huh Look at the flames in my eyes, watch it burn, but don't stare too long, you might lose your sight. Some people gunning for a devil, but they'll never see our demise. Burning life, burning life. Who's the one? I'm the one, he's the one. Are you the one? No, we're the ones. We're the ones who keep the fire going till the day we die, till they see the light, make it bright, till we hear the people say, Born sinner, never could be ill. I know I'm back from the dead, yeah, the Lord is my healer. I took the red pill, that's why I call him teacher. When you learn about the spirit, oh, there ain't nothing real. The one you learn from determines your entire destiny Learn from the one who taught about eternity Cloud craving, paper chasing The joy is only temporary I don't wanna do the same thing So I hide to count the vanity I keep my eyes on the prize I'll never sell my soul to the devil in disguise With both hands on each side I'm holding on to dear life I keep my guard up, never back down When it goes down, I call on the Christ Spiritual battle, 
Answer the call, it's Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, put the armor of God The fighting Lucy with the rock, I got atomic bombs Love the Lord your God and all your brothers, once the demons fall Don't be deceived, know who the ups is, keep the unity and peace Go far way across this, came to preach the word of God Like I'm born in Tarsus, here to testify the things I've seen on road to Damascus He's the real deal, the real thing, be glad you heard the king's speech Blessed to those who reach the end and get to hear the Lord speak G.O.D.'s, P.O.C., we fulfilled everything, burning life Kerosene, burning life, legacy You will never see me stop in the future The life that fulfills God's will, will continue Everyone thinks I'm unfortunate because I go through suffering But inside of me it's different Because I walk the path of eternal life Burning life, burning life, uh uh-huh Look at the flames in my eyes, watch it burn, but don't stare too long, you might lose your sight. Some people gunning for a devil, but they'll never see our demise. Burning life, burning life. Who's the one? I'm the one, he's the one. Are you the one? No, we're the ones. We're the ones who keep the fire going till the day we die, till they see the light, make it bright, till we hear the people say, Like Mary poured out her perfume on Jesus' feet, I must pour out. All right, so let's get into today's word study. It is Monday, so we do the Sunday message word study. Lots of things to think about. I love the title, The Eternal World is Determined on Earth. God and the Holy Spirit help you every single day. And, you know, there's something that I would say that is so different uh, and what is so profound in Providence, I would say. And it's something that I, I think all of us have to think about, especially those coming from the former faith. You know, in the former faith, one, one of the things that we do believe is you have no more chances after you live on the earth. Like, it's done. And what, what hap- whatever happens on this earth is whatever that happens. You know what I mean? So what happens is, we're, we're, you know, the problem with this is what about people who never heard the gospel? I had this exact same conversation with, uh, with my friend from the former faith on Saturday. And as we're talking, that question came up is, what about people, for instance, when Jesus came onto the earth, it's not like it spread all over the earth in an instant. It took like 100 years, 200, 300 years. It was only until the 4th century that Christianity became the state uh, state religion of Rome, and before that, it was looked down upon. So it like it wasn't like it was spreading all over the world. So what we have to understand is like, oh, okay. So if this is the case, what does that mean? Well, it means that think about it this way: uh, if your only chances here on this earth. And let's say Jesus came in the year zero. Well, Jesus started to preach in the year 30 or something along that line, right? And then for three years, he preaches his ministry, then he dies. And then it doesn't become the state religion of Rome until 400 years later, okay? Now, here's the problem. During those 400 years, it's not like the gospel is spreading all over the world outside of Rome, it's not like the Australia, people in Australia, the Aborigines or in North America, whatever it was. It's not like it reached out to them until far later. So if you think about that, you're talking hundreds and hundreds of years where people are living and dying without hearing the gospel. And is it fair for them to go to hell? Because they couldn't hear it on this earth, right? And one of the things we have to think about is, do you really think God's going to do it that way? Really? And the answer is no way God would do it like that. There's no way. God is loving and he is fair. And if someone doesn't have a chance, like how can God just throw them in hell like that? And two things we're going to find out. Number one is, it is true that your eternal world is determined on earth. That is true. That is true. And it's not true, but it's only true for the general public. Now, what does that mean? It means that, yes, uh, it means that, okay, yes, everyone here on this earth, especially in the time we're living right now, the gospel is readily available to everyone. Everyone knows that there's a religion called Christianity. It's readily available to every single person, okay? So whether they choose to believe or not believe in getting chances to listen or not, yeah, they're Destiny is determined here. Who does it not apply to? 
It doesn't apply to people in the Old Testament. Why? Jesus wasn't even living at that time, and they're dying even before the Messiah comes, right? It does not apply to people where they've never, ever had a chance to hear the gospel. They don't even know that Jesus exists or that Christianity is even a religion. Or people who are born in, like, even today, primitives in untouched civilizations even here on this earth. Very, very different, right? It doesn't apply to those specific people. So it's really about those who have access and those who don't have access to the gospel. But for all of us here, the eternal world is determined on the earth, right? It is. It's on the earth. And we have to be those that understand this very, very clearly. And um, uh, so that's, that's one of the things I really enjoy about, the mess, uh, about when, when we hear the word. It's so deep and powerful. It answers even those questions. What about those who never heard the gospel? Okay? Now, we'll get into a little bit more deeper, especially with this week's Sunday message. It started off with comfort. And I think this is something that's uh, always on our hearts and our minds because human beings in general, we just don't like to suffer obviously, right? We don't like suffering. And because we don't like suffering, we're always trying to find a more comfortable way, okay? Now, what Sunsteep said in the past is the reason why God gives us innovation, inventions to make our life more comfortable is not so that we could be lazy. It's so that we can spend more time with God, spending more time being even closer to God, spending more time in, you know, to do things to fulfill the purpose of creation. That's the whole reason why God makes it more comfortable. However, as human beings, what do we usually do? We don't use it to, to give glory to God. Instead, we use that time to give glory to ourselves and only do things for ourselves instead. You know what I mean? So that is something that I, I really think that we have to think about is, are we only trying to just be comfortable in every aspect of life or are we only trying to get comfort so that we have more time, right? We need to get comfortable so we have more time to do the things that we, we should do for God, right? And I think that's something that uh, we're going to struggle with off and on in life. Sometimes we suffer too much and we just want some comfort. Sometimes, you know, we're like, oh, like, do I have to still live this way? And you want to, you want to, you're trying to push yourself to become more comfortable too. But we have to realize is the reason why this, this week's message, like why comfort comes up in this week's message, because our destiny is determined on the earth. This short amount of time that we're living right now, why is it so important? This short time we're living in right now is so important to us, Right? It's so important to us that if we're spending time only trying to be comfortable, this is just a small, like since you talked about, it, you'll have about 30 years of faith. If you can just do 30 years of faith well, which me, I'm four out, four years away from doing 30 years of faith. You know, Pastor Baker's already at 30 years in Providence, right? But if you really think about it, it's kind of crazy that if we can just live that life properly, we're going to live for hundreds of billions of years in heaven. You know what I mean? And... The comfort is what's going to take away our time from God. Everything we do, our destinies are determined when our bodies are living here on the earth, and this is when it can change the most. You sow in the body, you reap in the spirit. And think about that, guys, 30 years. Like, I know that Sunsteep's just giving that as an example, but I think it's a great example. Can you succeed for eternity by living great for 30 years? I've done 26, guys. 26, 1998. Uh, 08, 18, uh, yeah. So mine is going to be 2028 is going to be my 30 years. 2028, which is four years away. So I'm 26 years this year, right? So those 30 years are going are gonna to de uh, determine my eternity. What am I going to do with it? Am I going to just try to live more comfortably or am I going to try to live for this history? Are we going to be those that are confined in the prisons of our own thoughts, just trying to become more comfortable, just trying to live the way that we want to live, not trying to avoid all the things that are going to make us uncomfortable? And it's true what the message says. We go to hell because of a momentary comfort. It's momentary. Just like Sunstein said in the past when he says, when he talked to people who were in jail with him when he was there for 10 years, he said it was this one moment they could not control themselves that made them suffer. So that one moment could have been like one minute of time that they went berserk and killed someone. 
that moment caused what? It caused abs. Like they're suffering in prison for 25 years because of one minute of mistakes. And that's kind of the same thing that we realize right now. You could be so good for your entire life and in one moment, one day, one hour, whatever it is, you lose everything. And that's why we really need to watch ourselves. We see that when people could not control themselves in 2023, everything just tumbled into chaos and we, we all kind of lost everything. We lost every, like uh, not we, but the people who left lost everything, right? It's our own thoughts. Our own thoughts that we stick to, our own thoughts that we think are right or living the way that we want, these are the things that are crushing us at this time. But if we think about the level of our thoughts, it was Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 is our thoughts and God's thoughts, how far, how far away are they? What's the difference? The difference is heaven and earth. So just look at... The difference between us looking at the sky and looking at the ground, you're talking how many, how many, like thousands upon thousands of feet. Just an airplane, an airplane is flying at like 35,000 feet. And it's higher than that. That's the difference between our thoughts and God's thoughts. And one thing that I, I, I really liked how the message told us was, the message said to us is, if you think too much in your own thoughts, it becomes your constitution. And if it becomes your constitution, you will, you'll, you'll start to even believe in idols, right? Or you could be your own idol, putting yourself above God. So why did God create this world? This world was created for us to be prepared to reach the next level. It's preparing us to go to heaven, Right? This, this world is not our world. It is God's world. He still created everything, right? And it's our preparation time to reach the next level, right? So if you have a trip, you know, um, uh, Sunseem said that, you know, he's talking a lot about going to hell. If you can visit hell just for a moment, you're going to see why people are there. You're going to see people there who betrayed the Lord too. Many people have lived there for even 6,000 years, so I think it's something that we really have to think about. And of course, Sunseem brought it, you know, he always talked about something so interesting. Like he's talking about this earth, this earth is the only, only time you have. And then he says, oh, by the way, before you get into hell, there's also a prison, right? A prison that leads to hell. And, but if you listen to the gospel, you can come out of that prison and believe in God. Right? And of course, we've all heard this before in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18 through 20, that there are people that still need to hear the gospel. Yes, they've lived wickedly in their life, but they still get a chance to hear the gospel, right? So we do see that, yeah, there are chances. So I think it's something that we really have to think about very, very carefully in how we preach the gospel to the people out there too, right? So what is the greatest miracle right now? Or what, not the greatest, but one of the biggest miracles or signs that we have is that our bodies are living in the new time period right now. That is a miracle itself. We're living in the new history in our bodies. That is a miracle. Because we basically are living at the, the right time. Because, you know, everyone else after us is living at the right time too because the gospel is going to be preached of, uh, of the Complete Testament history, right? But why are we even more blessed? The miracle is we're living at the same time the man mission is living. Right? We're living at the exact same time. So as he gave an analogy, he says, look, if you're building a house and if you don't think about what's going to happen in the future, what's going to happen? You're not going to be ready for the bad seasons that come. You need to build that house properly. And we have to understand is many people were like that, that they were following this history and they failed to keep the faith when the difficulties came. They failed to, right? And they couldn't believe in God when they were living in their time or they betrayed and left God. God and the Holy Spirit said to us through the message, you have to live your life in this world, preparing yourself for tribulations in the future. That's a big, that's God and the Holy Spirit telling us we're living here, but don't forget, prepare yourself for the tribulations in the future. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult. 
So don't lose yourself over some momentary comfort, but prepare yourself for the future. Too many people in this history have ended up like this, where when the tribulations came, they were not prepared and they just left. Who are the most successful people in the world? The message said, it's those that have met the man of mission and are living while achieving the salvation with him together. They are the most successful. Right? And I think that's powerful. That's a powerful statement that we were just given. We are living the most successful life. Another thing that I thought was really powerful was that first, uh, that first video where basically uh, they said, right now we're living very similar to the time of Noah where the flood came and took the people away. The ark door is closed and no one is out there to help others to get in. It's done. The door is closed. And even if it's painful now, we have to realize just like that time of the flood, we have to prepare, build the ark and get into the ark at the right time. But the most hopeful thing I loved from the first video was, guess what? Those good days, they're coming back again. In the future, those good days are coming back. Just like seasons come and go, the good days will come back again. So prepare to live with joy, even if you're suffering right now in the present. And yes, there's going to be those that laugh at us who are preparing for the, you know, even though we're living in suffering, don't worry future the joy is going to be there is the joy is going to be there you know uh, one thing that the message that uh talked about something very psychological and what the message said was when people suffer they run away from that place that they're suffering from right it's just like if you're getting beaten by your father or you have like abuse in the family you know because of that suffering you run away and we have to realize that god you know, God wants to lead us towards his domain even more. And God wants us to run away from the places of suffering, like from the places, do, the domain of death. And I think that we have to understand is, uh, and this is something that I think we've all experienced is when suffering comes, God will give us something. It's there to give us something better, right? Right? God, we go through suffering, so God gives us something better so we can go more deeply, more deeper into God's domain instead of running away from it, right? So I think it's something that we have to look very carefully in our life too is, yep, some bad things are going to happen. Yep, absolutely bad things are going to happen. But when it comes to living in this faith, living in this history, when these things happen, God is going to lead us to even better places, Right? So if God, God is going to, the suffering we have, God is already preparing something far better in the future. Okay. Uh, oh, the other thing the Holy Spirit said, I like this. It says, um, realize and valuably use everything God has given you, whether it's people, whether it's power, whether it's the environment. God has already given everything to us according to our deeds, Right. So, you know, we have to understand that God and the Holy Spirit are helping us. They're making sure that even through the difficult times, they're still helping us, that without them, it would be far worse. Okay? Uh, one of my favorite, uh, the, the verse that, that one of the scriptures is uh, Psalms 121, verse 1 and 2. And I thought it was quite interesting because it's, you know, there's a song made about this in, uh, in the former faith. It, uh, it goes... Um, I look my eyes up to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from you, maker of heaven, creator of the earth. Like, this is, a, this is one of those famous verses that I can memorize it only because there's a song about it. But what God and the Holy Spirit are telling us is, you know what? Don't just absolutely believe in us. Don't just believe that we're helping you every day. But you got to take action too. Don't, don't, don't let it just be us doing the work because if you don't take action, we're not going to take action because nothing's going to work if you, don't do, if you don't put the words into action too. God's not just going to do it for us 100%. We have to do our best. Right? We have to be the ones following the one that God has sent and putting the words into action. Right? Uh. One thing that what that one thing that the message was telling us right now, what do we need to do? 
Right now is a time that we have to pull out the weeds of our own contradictions. Discard contradictions. You got to repent. You got to over, overcome. And you need to be equipped. You'll never be blessed without doing this. So get rid of the wickedness. Get rid of the sin. Repent. Overcome the difficult times of tribulations and equip ourselves for the future to be blessed. Right? That's the time right now. Like a farmer, we're pulling out the weeds. We're not pulling out the, the, the grains and, and we're not pulling out you know, the, what is good. We have to pull out what is wicked. And one of the biggest things that needs to be done, especially being the counterpart of God to counterpart of love to God, we have to make ourselves clean. Right? We have to make ourselves absolutely clean. And that's something that we got to spend this time right now in repentance and in prayer too. So I hope it's something that we can, you know, really pray and make our hearts even more spiritual. Uh, let's not get discouraged by our own thoughts and our own feelings. Okay, so let's make ourselves clean. Let's let's give God hope in us. Okay, so uh, I I like this one point that was made was uh, the message said, look at how you should act. Check and then take action with the Holy Spirit's guidance, right? So don't just do whatever you want. Check how you should act and take action with the Holy Spirit's guidance. Mm. With the Holy Spirit's guidance. So I hope that we'll really have that mentality and that mindset. And, you know, there's a bunch of stuff in the message about rumors and stuff like that. And, you know, we don't want to be part of those things. We want to be those that are taking care of each other, loving each other the best that we can. Right? And of course, what was that big request that God and the Holy Spirit had? Think about it. You've been saved. So go out and save others. Right? If you want to be my body, we need to save these people from death. God and the Holy Spirit have always taken care of you. So we need to always, go, we got to go out and take care of other lives too. So let God use us as his mouthpiece and as his body. Hmm. Uh, probably last thing is, what are the, the things that uh, the message said? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine things. Why things don't work out even though God and the Holy Spirit are helping. What are the nine things? Number one is, you live according to your physical nature. That's the, that's the first reason why things don't work out. Second reason why things don't work out even though God is helping us, we don't know that they are actually helping us. Third reason even though they're helping us, things turn out well when we do our responsibility, which means we didn't do our responsibility. Number four, we need to become united with the Holy Trinity. Number five, you need to receive the help and not live centered on ourself. Number six, you have to know in detail of how they're helping us. Number seven, become united with the man of mission, then become two strands and receive power and blessings. Number eight, after they help us, we have, to, we, we have to also love them. And last but not least, even though they help, we need to take action and fight against evil and Satan. Then God and the Holy Spirit will use us to display their power. So those are the nine things, all right? So I hope that we will live for hell, uh, heaven diligently and we'll be those that uh, will live in the golden city for hundreds of billions of years. All right. So, yeah, that is the uh, the awesome message from the Sunday message. We have six months left, uh, six months that uh, God will be blessing us. So I hope that all of us can take action in whatever we do. OK, so there it is, guys. That is today's. Uh, what am I saying? That is today's uh, Sunday message word study. Hope you guys really enjoyed it, which means that we do have a Pravi in the media next. I uh, will get into that. If you guys haven't heard, uh, I did do it on uh, the first segment in on the Friday uh, podcast. So go ahead, listen to that to get some more updates and details of what's happening with what happened with the trial. Today I'll talk about something a little, that's related to it, but a little bit different and really, really hopeful. Okay, so there it is, guys. That is today's uh, one uh, Sunday message word study. Hope you guys enjoyed it. So let's move on to the last music break of the day. <laughs>
Okay, so let's get into our final segment of the day, which is Pravi in the media. And there is something that I talked about on Friday. So those of you guys who didn't hear the update for the trial, Sun Seems trial, what happened on the 25th of July, go ahead and check out the first segment for the Friday podcast, okay? Now, there is something that did come out, and I thought it, this was something that was really uh, crazy, okay? So here's the thing. One thing we do know is that... Um, what happens in the Korean court system is when someone goes to trial, they don't need to actually be in jail. They don't need to be there, right? They just, you know, some for some people who are a flight risk or someone they think will escape or run away or not come back to court, they'll keep them in jail. And the maximum they can keep them there is six months, okay? And Sunstein, for some reason, was considered or deemed a flight risk. I'm not even sure why. But he was held for six months, and then it was renewed again for another six months. However, that six months ends on August 15th, which is obviously uh, Independence Day of Korea. Okay, so it's, it's the Day of Freedom, which is quite amazing and awesome. Now, what can happen here is what they talked about, what the lawyer talked about is that they are going, if this trial goes past August 15th, they're going to request from the courts uh, that Sun Seem uh, allowed to go out on bail. Now, what does that mean is, you know, you'll put some money up front and then you're able to be free from jail and you can kind of, you know, he'll, he'll be in Wormyong Dong the whole time, whatever it is, right? Which means, tell me how crazy that is, guys, that it is possible that if this trial goes past August 15th or whatnot, Sun Seem could possibly be in Wormyong Dong. from like past past August 15th. Now, this is ridiculous if you think about that because I already know that there are some people taking trips to Korea, like even in Malaysia, some people going in September, some people going in October. Can you imagine that when you go, Sun seems in morning dong. Tell me that's crazy. If he gets out, how many people do you think are going to be visiting Wonmyong dong? If he gets bail. Now, I'm not saying it's 100%. Totally not. But what I'm saying is, let's pray for that. Those of you out there who are planning trips to Korea in like September, October, November, it is nuts that it is. it can be a possibility that Sunsim will be in Wolmyongdong, which means pray even more. Pray even more at this time that that becomes a real life possibility that you could possibly, I don't know if you'll come out to meet people, but at least get a glimpse of him. Or uh, that would be amazing if you could just speak to people or whatnot, right? But that is something I do think that everyone should pray about. Remember, August 15th is a date where his six-month detention ends. And one thing good about this appellate trial that's going on right now is the judges seem to be a lot more fair than the first trial, right? Like, I would say 10 times more fair, right? The way that, like, even the way they didn't, they're not going to accept the evidence and they said the burden of proof is on the prosecution. You can't just give evidence and say that it's real. It's got to be proven kind of thing, right? So it's very, very interesting that we actually have much, much more fairer judges, and with these fair judges, uh, let's really pray that uh, there could be a, a mini miracle happening that some of you will be able to see him in Wolmyongdong, you know, like after August 15th. And I'm not, like I said, guys, it's not 100%, but it is possible, very possible. So that's something I do think we can pray about and something that is really exciting in my heart. Like, wow, if that happens, that would be nuts, right? So that is something that I was thinking about too, but either way. So there it is, guys. That is something that uh, I just wanted to kind of make a reflection point on what I talked about on the Friday podcast about Sun Seems trial and the update for the latest trial. The next one is going to be July 25th. So I hope that everyone uh, will pray uh, up until the 25th so we have greater things happening there too. All right? So it was a very, very short probably in the media, but very hopeful and makes me very excited and happy too. Okay? So there it is, guys. Uh, that is probably in the media. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Gives you a really hopeful update. Gives us more things to pray about. And if you have anything else, just let me know. All right? So there it is. Monday podcast in the books. Hope you guys will have an amazing and awesome week. And we'll see you guys again tomorrow, which will be Eddie 
on the Morning Star Drive. Uh, on the po- on the Morning Star Drive. Blah, 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 blah. Tomorrow will be Eddie on the Tuesday podcast. So see you guys again tomorrow with Eddie and Wednesday with me again on the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. <laughs> It's the morning star drive on 17.8. You saw run up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly. So let's realign. Just listen and fill your mind. I'm burning with desire and the passion. Nobody can stop me when I'm like this. I got my head in the zone, you know. I'm on the morning star drive, you know. I'm burning with desire and the passion. Nobody can stop me when I'm like this. I got my head in the zone, you know I'm on the morning star drive, you know